Vermicomposting is a green technology that can be used to convert agricultural and other organic wastes into valuable living soil amendments. When used in a potting mix for greenhouse production, vermicompost provides a renewable source of plant nutrients. The microorganisms in vermicompost can protect seedlings from disease. Vermicomposting relies on earthworms, but the worms don't do it alone. The compost food web is an underground ecosystem fueled by decaying organic matter. Most of the action is microscopic. Single-celled bacteria and fungi are the primary decomposers. Protozoans graze on bacteria and help cycle nutrients. Earthworms used for composting ingest organic matter and microbes and excrete casts, which in turn stimulate additional microbial activity. You can almost think of the earthworms as microbe farmers. Earthworms are hermaphrodites, meaning that they have both male and female reproductive organs. When two worms mate, a tight band of mucus forms around their bodies, which later becomes a cocoon containing fertilized eggs. Several weeks later, hatchlings emerge from the cocoon. Microarthropods, including mites and springtails, prey on microorganisms and each other. Pseudoscorpions are related to true scorpions. They are top predators, feeding on mites and springtails. Vermicompost is a complex living system that nourishes and sustains plant life. Most commercial greenhouses rely on synthetic chemical nutrients in their potting mixes to produce vegetable transplants. Greenhouse growers and researchers are looking into non-synthetic alternatives. Organic materials, like vermicompost, can provide a source of plant nutrients that are derived from renewable resources. Today we're looking at green peppers. This one we started with base, which consists of vermiculite, perlite, peat moss, and dolomitic lime. And this one is the base with 10% vermicompost, and this one, which is the best one, is the base vermicompost and green sand, rock phosphate, and blood meal. Temperature is an important factor in using vermicompost for nutrient management in the greenhouse, since the release of nutrients in this living soil amendment depends on microbial activity. It's easy to work with, it flows nicely, it doesn't clump up, and it's easy to mix in our soil mixes. The microbes found in vermicompost can help protect plants from disease. Pythium aphanodermatum is an oomycete plant pathogen that attacks germinating seeds and has a host range of over 50 crop species. Sporangia are a stage in the asexual development in Pythium. Sporangia produce spherical vesicles. Cytoplasm from the sporangia streams into the vesicle where it cleaves into kidney-shaped zoospores. When the zoospores are fully formed, the vesicle breaks and the zoospores are released. When zoospores are exposed to chemical signals released from germinating seeds, represented here by the blue gradient, they use their flagella to swim towards the seed. This behavior is called chemotaxis, or directional swimming using a chemical gradient. When they reach the germinating seed, they shed their flagella and attach to the seed. The insisted zoospores germinate and cause infection. In the presence of vermicompost, Pythium zoospores are not able to cause disease in cucumber seeds. We believe this is because the seed colonizing microbes in vermicompost alter the chemical cues released from the seed, represented here by the green gradient. 
This interruption in chemical signaling means that the swimming zoospores cannot find their host and no infection occurs. Sterilized vermicompost offers no protection, indicating that living microbes are essential to this process. Scientists are currently working to understand the microbial mechanisms responsible for the biological control of plant pathogens in order to make this practice more effective for growers. Vermicomposting is an organic waste recycling method that keeps these materials out of our landfills. In 2008, EPA estimates show that although recycling and composting rates are on the rise, 38% of annual landfill contents could have been recycled through composting. Vermicomposting can be done on a variety of scales. Home vermicomposting is an option for apartment dwellers because it works well indoors. Kitchen scraps and newspaper can be easily converted into vermicompost. Some worm farms are operated as small businesses, selling composting earthworms and vermicompost at regional farmers markets and online. This large-scale vermicomposting operation uses cow manure. At the dairy, manure slurry is collected and the solids are separated from the liquids using a screw press. Microorganisms in the manure solids drive temperatures up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit for two weeks. This brief hot composting step kills pathogens and weed seeds in the manure. The whole system is designed that the worms will come up to eat, that's their, na their nature. So we feed from the top and then we harvest the finished material from the bottom. The worms ingest and fragment the manure, excreting nutrient-rich castings. They migrate upward towards the fresh food, and finished vermicompost is scraped from the bottom of the worm beds. The entire process takes about 75 days. Large-scale vermicomposting operations can supply commercial growers with a valuable soil amendment and help livestock farmers manage excess manure in a sustainable way, while keeping it out of fragile watersheds, helping to prevent soil, water, and air pollution. Commercial vermicomposting facilities can process most kinds of organic waste. Vermicomposting converts renewable resources into viable alternatives for synthetic fertilizers. Vermicomposts can suppress the disease symptoms caused by some plant pathogens. The more we understand about the biology of these living soil amendments, the more effectively we can use renewable resources for sustainable crop production.